All right, um, here's the uh, highs and beans update video on uh, pretty much. I'm gonna talk about a couple of things on this video. Um, and basically, there was a topic that came up this week on the uh, chuckersparadise.com forum, which is uh, you know, it's like a, a forum where people go and they talk about cannabis and their seed giveaways and contests and all that other stuff. It's chuckersparadise.com, it's a pretty cool uh, forum, but anyway, uh, the, the subject was brought up and people were talking about um, how long does it take a plant to finish and breeders put in like specific dates and times of like how long it takes those seeds to finish. Okay, I want to talk about that a little bit. Um, here, I'm filling up these reservoirs right now if you can see them. This is the floor flex system. I just uh, emptied out the water with the pump. I'd use a, uh, that's about full right there. I actually use a, uh, um a uh, sump pump and just empty them out with a sump pump it's pretty pretty easy but anyway let me plug this back in oh shit let's get this going and i put aquarium filters in my reses like that and what that does is it adds a lot of oxygen to the water so when the oxygen when the water gets pumped like there i got a pump on a timer then that goes into the to the main line that goes down the center of the plants, which is right there. And it's got like a manifold. And then, you know, that of course, that auto feeds the plants. As you can see, the plants are super happy. And to me, this has been the best system ever. Like I've done so many hydroponic systems. I've done everything. I've grown all kinds of different ways. And this system is no joke. This is like the most trouble-free, no bullshit system. And another thing I want to talk about, people ask me, what nutrients do you use? Well, I use Dynagro. I've used them all, man. I've even tried Jacks. I've tried all this other shit. And legit, Dynagro is like got it all, man. It's got the calcium, the magnesium, everything is in it that, um, that, I, that my plants need. And I never have any issues, no deficiencies, never. So, as, I mean, as you can see, the plants look super happy. I got these under cobs right there, as you can see. 750 watts of cobs right there and I'm running on these I'm running the 240 1400 right there and I got three drivers um and they're running the, the cob uh, the voltage on the cobs are about 36 7 volts 38 volts so you multiply that by 1.4 amps and that's how many watts I'm running per cob and as you can see the cob side and then look at the CMH side it's just not as full it's not as vigorous people swear by these 630 watt CMHs, I'm just not impressed. They're okay. I'm just not impressed. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, I'm running it anyway because it's what I got. And this is the second run. I wanted to see if there was really a difference. But, I mean, as you can see, the cob in versus the CMH in, there's just no fucking comparison, dude. The, CM, the cobs knocked the dick off the CMH. That's a whole other subject. People beat, beat my shit to death. They're like, oh, your CMH is too low. You're burning your plants. Like, motherfucker, do you, I mean, I know how high to hang a light, dude. This ain't my first time doing this shit. I know what the fuck I'm doing. So anyway, um, so talk about flowering times. And I'm going to tell you right now, if you start a plant from seed, if that plant is not sexually mature, it will not flower. Even if you force flower it at 12-12, it will not flower. So a sexually mature plant typically is your inner nodes are offset. You see how you got one node here, another node there, another node there. When you start a plant from seed, your nodes come out of the same spot on both sides. Okay? That means the plant's not sexually mature. You don't have any sex. See the, see the pistols coming out? Right there. See that? Those, that's a female uh, sex organ. All right? And then for a male, because these are regs, I'm going to show you. A male, which I have one over here because this is a reg run, um, those are nut sacks. Okay, that's a fucking male. All right, you see that? If you put a plant that's under seed in 1212, it will not flower. So that plant might take an extra two weeks, even after you flipped it to 1212, it might take an extra two weeks to start to flower. So. Then it runs for eight to nine weeks, so you end up with a 12-week finish time. That does not mean that that plant finishes in 12 weeks. What it means is the plant didn't even start flowering until it became sexually mature. Forcing a plant to flower under 12-12 from seed 
does not mean that it's going to start flowering. It cannot initiate flower until it is sexually mature. So plants from clone, once you flip them to 12-12, you start your time cycle. That's when you start your wheat count. But from seed, it's a fucking toss-up, man. You, you cannot count from seed when you grow from seed until you know exactly when that flat plant is sexually mature. Once it's sexually mature, when you see offset nodes like those and you see sex parts, then you can start counting the days or the weeks to finish. Typically, most, most, most strains finish between eight to 10 weeks. You know what I'm saying? So, you I mean, I don't necessarily, I mean, the best way to tell if a plant's finished is to get a microscope or a loop or something and look at the trichomes on the, on the, on the buds. And then when you start to see a certain percentage of them are all cloudy, because cloudy is what you're after. That's the THC. If they're clear, then they don't have any THC in them. If they're cloudy, with well, some of them have turned like an amber color or a purple color, then it's probably getting close to finish time. Um, that's the best way to tell. Some guys can just look at them and they know that the, 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 the buds have gotten fat, the calyxes are fat, they're not getting any bigger. Plant starts to look like shit. Yeah, it's time to chop it. A lot of guys don't wait. A lot of people don't have patience, man. They just say, fuck it, let me chop it in seven weeks. And they really lose out on the benefit of what the plant, the potential of the plant. For me, I get to see all these plants finish late because they're three weeks in the flower before they even get pollinated. And it takes seven weeks to make seeds. So all my plants run to 10 weeks. And I can tell you, it makes a huge ass difference. That last week, letting the plant finish up really makes a huge difference. So I just wanted to talk about that, flipping from seed, from flower. Clones, you can count from the time you flip. That's how many weeks it takes. From seed, you have to count from when the plant is mature. It has to be sexually mature or it will not, it won't matter. You know what I'm saying? Like just say, for instance, you start some seeds, um, you start some seeds under 12-12. Well, you can't count that as day one because if you started it under 12-12, that plant is going to take at least 14 weeks to fucking finish. That's not a 14-week strain. It's impossible. So you have to count from when the plant is sexually mature. Then you flip your lights to 12-12. From that day on is how many weeks that plant takes to finish. Okay? Um, some of these strains are longer. Some of them are shorter. Like the Purple Punch that I have finishes in eight weeks. Some of the other ones, like the Stardoll Crosses, some of those take a little longer. The GMO, 10 weeks. Wedding Cake, 10 weeks. Some of those take longer than the others. Some of them finish really fast. Purple Punch finishes super fast. Dosey, fast. Um, what else? Uh, Fruity Pebbles takes a little longer. Motor Breath takes a little longer, maybe nine weeks. Gorilla Glue, nine weeks, right around, um, I think it's right around 65 to 67 days it's finished up. Those strains that are once they're from, cloned out, you can count those from the day you flip because the plant's already sexually mature. Um, that was one thing I wanted to go over and then uh, there was something else um, Yeah, so basically I got I'm running this right here and for those of you who don't know um, These plants right here I run them But a lot of guys when they mix their nutrients they're like oh man I got to add a certain amount of milliliters and all this bullshit. No, you don't what I do Legit is I use foliage pro. That's it. You can use protect and some of the other stuff that comes with Dynagro But I personally just use the foliage pro and you can see you don't need all them extra additives Some guys run advanced nutrients and they add all this extra shit My plants look just as good as any other person that's running all that extra additives and shit. Okay, it ain't about the additives dude It's about your environment. You need to, you need to dial in your environment to what what uh, nutrient strength so the, the brighter the lights, the more nutrient strength you need. If you're running CFLs in real low light, and then you go on a forum or somewhere and you tell everybody, man, you're going to burn your plants with 500 ppm, blah, 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 because you're using some weak-ass lights, don't mean that I'm going to burn my fucking plants because I'm running 650 to 800 ppm of nutrient strength. And I put, but my lights are powerful. You know what I'm saying? Like, these are strong lights. So the lights have to match your the lights have to match whatever nutrient strength you're running you know what i'm saying the more powerful the lights you could probably go up a little bit also humidity plays a role if your humidity is really high high ass humidity the plants aren't going to drink as much so you can probably bring your nutrient strength up some because they're not absorbing as much nutrients through the soil or the or your hydro system if your humidity is super low they're going to be drinking a lot so if you raise your if you raise your uh your ppm levels up 
which your TDS, your total dissolved solids in your nutrient strength, if they're tra taking a lot in because the humidity is low, they're going to probably burn. So you really have to match your light and you also have to match your humidity. Okay. So if you're running temperatures around 77, 78, and you got humidity around 55 to 60 percent, you're fucking golden. You want to keep your humidity and your um, your your temperatures fluctuations around the same. You know what I'm saying? You don't want 80 degrees room and 20 percent humidity. Your plants are going to be drinking a fucking gallon a day. If your PPM is set too high, you're going to roast the fuck out of your plants. So you really need to dial in your room. Keep it consistent and then watch your plants and see what they're taking in. You know what I'm saying? If you start getting burns and plants looking like shit, then you need to you need to drop your PPM level. And I'm going to show you how I mix mine to do that. But always pay attention to the new growth, which comes out of the tops. All right? See that? That's what you want to look for. Leaves should come out uniform. They should look super happy. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, you're looking for, uh, you know, all new growth needs to look good. Um, don't ever pay attention to the bottom growth because that don't mean shit. That was like three weeks ago. You know what I'm saying? Always pay attention to the new growth. The new growth tells you. And also another thing, guys were asking me about scrog and all that shit. What I found the best way to do these plants is to just bend them over. Like, don't really overthink it. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you got a, if you got a branch in there that's too tall. Okay, let me show you. There's a couple over there. You got a branch that's just getting where it's getting over the canopy height. What I started doing is just kind of like smash it a little bit, smash the stem a little bit, and then fold it over. Just like that. Alright. Just smash it and try to work it, work it over so that it bends without breaking. If it breaks, fuck it. It's not a big deal. Something else will come in and take its place. Alright, you see how that's bent over like that? So, here's another one. You just kind of bend it, give it a little bit of pressure, and try to bend it slow without breaking it. All right, and that's it, man. You just bend them over. And what will happen is, is that when you bend them over, see how this one's been bent over right there? See that, how it's been bent over, and then it just starts to grow upwards. So it basically grows over and up. See that? So I don't have to deal with a scrog net or none of that bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Here's another one that needs to go over. So... You just want to like pinch it a little bit and then fold it into an area that's empty. See that? Now it's folded over. Boom. Just like that. It's folded over. It's bent over. You know what I mean? Here's another one that needs to go over. So look. Right there. See? Just bend it over. Same thing with this one. Oh, look. There's a little lizard. Just behind there. Look. There he is right down there. You see him? Little baby lizard. That's kind of cool. All right, so there we go. Bent over. See that? So you get a few bent over, but that keeps your canopy height the same. You know what I'm saying? I just started doing that. It's just worked out a lot easier for me. And then what I'll do when they start hitting flower, this is if you have like limited ceiling height. So when they hit flower really hard, I'll come in here and throw some stakes on the outside to kind of hold all that shit in. But if you got a plant that's bending, like if you got a plant that's trying to like lean over to the left, when you bend the branches over, bend them to the right. So that kind of equals the plant out. So it basically, you end up with a plant that's just all been bent over. Um, so it's basically, you know, it's holding itself up. So yeah, I just bent that one over right there. If the stem breaks a little bit, don't worry about it. <coughs> plants take up, plants take up their nutrients from the outside layer of the, of the branches anyway. So anyway, here's what I want to do. You're going to want to get yourself a TDS meter. So basically, that's what this is. All right, measures how many PPMs in the water. So my starting PPM is 250, okay? Because I don't use RO water enough, and I just use straight tap water. All right, and I use UV filters. So 240. So if I want to run 600 PPM... I'm going to add 240 to 600, which is going to be 840. So that's what I want to mix to, all right? So you take this shit here. This is what I'm using. Folius Pro, Dynagro. Put a little bit in here. And I don't get paid shit from Dynagro. I just really like their stuff, man. I started, my buddy turned me on to it, and I started using it. And I'm just like, damn, dude, that shit's really good. All right, so you put it in. 
And then you check that. And I recommend anybody to get a TDS meter, legit. I mean, fuck, dude, that's really the most accurate way. So now I'm gonna put a little bit more in. I'm gonna mix that up. I'm at 800. So I started with 240, and I'm at 820, 810. So I need, I'm, I want to get um, 840, so I'm going to keep mixing. 780. All right, so maybe just a little bit more, and then that'll be it for that. And then I'll do the same thing to the other tote. Get my PPM around 840. That'll give me 600 PPM. 850, that's perfect. And that's where I'm going to leave it. And so basically what happens is, I do this every week. I change out the res every week. So they go into the to the table. I have another pump that empties the table and brings it back to the res. So basically what I'm putting in is I'm t putting in the same as what's coming out. So my plants are being fed 840 ppm at all times. Watch that number. Watch your plants. If your plants start burning, drop the number. If they look deficient, like the new growth coming out of the top is all ugly and weird and, and twisted and tiny leaves with a little bit of yellowing you need to bump your ppm up so if you're going from 500 go ahead and add a couple hundred to it and then watch all the new growth that's what you're doing man you have to watch all the new growth so um anyway i just wanted to talk about those things with this video and then hopefully um i'll make another one next week i have some other stuff i want to talk about thanks for watching